I'm Natalie Zend, Robert Zend's daughter, and I want to tell the story of how this book, Bibliae Idurk Ben Eltunk, came to be. I'm telling the story in English, even though the book's in Hungarian, because though I understand the language, my spoken Hungarian is more limited. This is Robert Zend's first book to be published in 25 years, and it comes 32 years after his death. So it's kind of a remarkable story, and that's why I want to tell it. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Robert Zend was the only child of a correspondence clerk in a rice mill and a devoted mother. And early on, his parents were under the impression that he was slightly retarded, and they planned to take him out of, grade, of school in grade four and apprentice him to a carpenter. But then by grade two, he started reading fluently, and then he started reciting entire Petrofi poems in Hungarian by heart. And he, he was able to play anything on the piano by ear after hearing it just once. As early as 10, he knew he would be a writer, even though he began to write regularly only at 15. And that remained his primary identity throughout his life though he was also a masterful pianist, a filmmaker, a visual artist, and a photographer. As a young man in Hungary, he worked for Mafiet, later Muke, for the Hungarian National Film Company, producing movie posters like these ones, as well as editing films and writing film reviews. But in 1953, he was blacklisted by the Communist Party apparently for giving overly honest feedback on the quality of food at a political event. He was a little too outspoken. And as a result, he, he was not able to get full-time work after that and had to piece together and barely eke out a living from a variety of jobs as a freelance journalist. Here he is in the editorial room of Paitash magazine, for which he wrote a very popular children's column under the pen name of Kukanto Marzi. He also did editorial work during this time and translated poetry and essays from German, Italian, and Russian into Hungarian, and worked with illustrators, artists, and printing shops. And he continued to write poetry, and by 1956, his first book of 100 poems was about to be published when the Hungarian Revolution broke out. He had to leave the manuscript behind along with everything else and flee the country with his wife, Ibi, and their daughter, Aniko. Once in Canada, he soon got a job with the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, first as a shipper, then as a film librarian, a film editor, and finally, as a, la a radio producer of over 100 CBC Ideas programs. Despite the nine to five jobs, and sometimes inspired by, by, later inspired by the Ideas work, he continued to be prolific in his creativity. He was active in Hungarian, Canadian artistic and literary circles with people like Faludi, the writer, the cartoonist George Feyer, the filmmaker Albert Kish, he also stayed in touch with Hungarian friends like Karin Tizini, the son of his mentor Fridjas, and he developed friendships with international figures through his ideas work, like the French mime Marcel Marceau and the Argentinian writer Jorge Luis Borges. But for years, he was stuck in a kind of literary no man's land. No one in Hungary would publish him since he was an illegal exile. And it wasn't until 1964 that he began to write in English, so he couldn't get published in Canada. Finally, in 1969, with the help of John Robert Colombo, he translated a series of Hungarian poems, and at last, his very first book was published in 1973. This was 17 years after his first collection of poems was lost to the revolution. Now let me backtrack for a minute, seven years before. In 1965, he met a young French engineer, Janine. This happened not long after he began writing in English, and in fact, as I understand it, his love poems to her in English seem to have been a big part of what enticed her to stay in Canada. A few years later, in 1972, I was born, 
And then in 1973, the same year that that first book was finally published, he also had the first of several heart attacks and strokes, and that was followed by a period of ill health. In 1977, he decided to leave the CBC to devote himself more fully to his writing. And that bore fruit in a series of publications between 1982 and 1985, including Oab, what he considered to be his magnum opus, and another book of poems, Beyond Labels. Then, in 1985, all of that was interrupted. He might say it was like a period in the middle of a sentence, because he still had so much to create, and of what was already written, there was still so much to publish. He left a house full of a kind of effervescent chaos. And my mom spent the next eight years sorting through all of that and turning it into five books, two in English and three in Hungarian. And then she turned to me and she said, I'm done. The rest is up to you. But I was still young. So 10 years went by and then I began to dream of a Robert Zend website. But it took another decade until conditions at last came together and the website was launched. On it, I've made all of his published works available. There's also visual works and audio recordings and a remarkable 16-part exploration of his life and work by Camille Martin. It was through that website that a couple years later, in 2016, I got an email from a Mr. Tobias Christian, the editor of a Hungarian literary quarterly called Tempevöld. He had come across a Zen poem in a reader while preparing to teach a special poetry day lesson to school kids, and from there he had found the website. And he wanted permission to publish a unit dedicated to Robert Zend and his works in honor of the 60th anniversary of the Hungarian Revolution. So I went over to my, father for my father's first wife, Ibi's place. And we spent an afternoon reading from her box of Zen manuscripts with the aim of choosing poems to include in that unit. And as we read through those Hungarian poems, we wondered how is it that some of the very best poems here have not yet been published? We couldn't figure it out. So I called up my mum in my confusion and she reminded me that in the late 80s, Anna Csekegal and Oliver Botar had prepared four Hungarian manuscripts, but only three had been published. So I found that fourth unpublished manuscript as well as the unpublished original in Hungarian of his first book of poems from zero to one. And I sent them off to Tobias along with material for the unit and, and asked about, you know, could these be published? So from a selection of those two manuscripts, as well as an already published book called Hazam Törveket Tövel, this book was born. Bibliai idők ben éltünk. And so that, my friends, is the story of how this book came to be. Thank you.